Hi everybody, I'm Megan Courtney and I did my presentation about an article that I read that discusses methanogen production at varying temperatures in an anaerobic digester. The article is fairly recent and effectively displays thermophilic activity and the efficiency of the digester at these different temperatures. Digester sludge, uh, containing many different species of microbes, CO2, and acetate, was studied at different temperatures. It was found that different microbes grew optimally with different temperatures and with either CO2 or acetate present. With increased methanosarcina, uh, that's a type of microbe that uh, a type of thermophilic microbe that was studied in this in this article. Methanogenesis from the acetate was optimal between 55 and 60 degrees Celsius and was completely inhibited at 65 degrees Celsius. A methanocarcina culture isolated from the digester grew optimally uh, on acetate at between 55 and 58 degrees Celsius and actually produced no methane at a temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. With a different microbe called methanotrix present, methanogenesis from acetate was optimal at 65 degrees and was completely inhibited at 75 degrees. With CO2, however, incubation at 65 degrees produced the most methane. Um, however, growth was still observed at 75 degrees Celsius. So in summary, there, was, there seemed to be a correlation between digester performance and temperature. Um, the type of microbe plays an important role in digester performance, according to this article. Um, and it was found that methanogenic microbes are very picky with their, with their thermal with their environmental conditions, um, and they only really grow at a particular range uh, of temperatures. So here is one of the figures taken from the article. You can see that with different additives, the thermophiles behave differently from each other. Just looking at this graph, it seems that the optimal growth temperature uh, was between 55 and 58 degrees for acetate, um, and it seemed to be slightly higher for those using CO2. Microorganisms that grow at these temperatures are referred to as thermophiles. There are many other types of microbes that grow in extreme conditions. Uh, those can be, for example, alkalophiles and acidophiles grow in low and high pH environments. And also psychrophiles are organisms that are capable of growth and reproduction in extreme cold temperatures, ranging from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, this article does a really great job at explaining the importance of choosing the right microorganisms as well as the optimal temperature for biogas production. In this article, they state that the temperature of the bioreactor was accidentally shifted during the course of this experiment. However, it was caught the next day and changed back to the optimal temperature that they were studying. You can see that from this graph uh, that around day four, the gas production plummeted and the acetate production actually greatly increased. Once the temperature was changed back to 58 degrees, the gas production slowly increased and recovered back to normal. This graph, as you can see on the slide, is a tad bit misleading to me because it gives the impression that 58 degrees made the gas production decrease, but that's not really the case because it takes some time for the levels to reestablish themselves after a change that drastic. So this graph is just showing that when the temperature increased, it really definitely had an impact on the gas production by these micro, microorganisms. So overall, the efficiency of the digester really depends on two major factors, temperature and the microorganisms that are present within the bioreactor. All microorganisms are different and need different environmental conditions to survive and thrive. Temperature has a large impact on the amount of methane that can be produced using methanogenesis and should be taken into account when optimizing your bioreactor for, for the best production. So digester efficiency significantly decreased at temperatures above 65 degrees. Keep in mind though that this is for the particular microbes that they studied. It really also greatly depends on the type of microbes that are present in your digester. So to answer some of the uh, required questions, the post questions to us, the benefits of this article is that we can use this information to optimize production for other classes of microbes. For example, as I had mentioned before, using psychrophiles that produce, reproduce at low temperatures, mesophiles, or even acidophiles and alkalophiles. If we can create the environment that these microorganisms grow best in, 
then we can potentially benefit from these as well as the thermophiles. So instead of limiting ourselves to using only thermophiles, we can utilize other microbes as well. In the future, I think that exploring additional microorganisms could be beneficial to increasing gas production. Some difficulties that this article came across was keeping the temperature controlled. Um, it's important to gas production to closely monitor this temperature to achieve maximum efficiency. One suggestion that I have is uh, potentially using alarms that could be used uh, if the temperature approaches an undesired value. And this would prevent the fluctuations in the temperature and actually keep optimal growth in your bioreactor. Alternative applications could include, like I said before, applying this technology to other types and classes of microbes and to be able to really utilize as much as we can for optimal gas production. And thanks for listening to my presentation. You can read the article at the link provided on the slides. Um, thanks.